Thank you again, everyone, for joining us on this fourth day of Civic Learning Week and the final Committee of 70 uh, webinar on our classroom resources for American democracy. Uh, today, we'll be discussing how to sign up for and use C70's experiential civics resources, uh, including Studio C70, our student candidate interview series. Uh, we are honored to be joined by Philadelphia Council Member Ruth Landau, uh, who was a participant last fall, who's going to share her experience uh, participating uh, and, you know, let teachers and candidates and everyone out there know uh, just how uh, excellent of a resource this is. Uh, it's certainly one of my favorites at Media 70. Uh, then we will be uh, joined by Nathan Salomo from Universal Alden Reed, who uh, will share the teacher's perspective on preparing a class to participate in those interviews. And then we'll have on Tom Quinn of PA Youth Vote, another teacher, uh, to share about our elections and voting curriculum, youth mock election, and other resources. So that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, and thank you again, everyone, uh, tuning in synchronously, asynchronously uh, to this session. I think it'll be really helpful. A reminder for this session, uh, Q&A, uh, we are going to have a Q&A period with Council Member Landau, and then a teacher uh, focused Q&A at the end uh, with uh, Tom Quinn and Regina Holly, who's joining us from uh, P Youth Photos here, uh, and, and Nate at the end. Uh, so please ask your questions in the chat or in the Q&A. We'll not be unmuting anyone uh, today from the attendees from the audience. So just if you have a question, just write it there in the Q&A. It'll pop up and I'll ask it for you. Uh, so please ask your questions there and I will be monitoring them and we'll uh, provide contact and additional uh, uh, contact info for additional questions at the end. So as a reminder, uh, for those uh, unfamiliar, Committee of 70 uh, is... And around 1904, leading the nonpartisan effort in Pennsylvania to improve government, make it more representative, transparent, and accountable. And that uh, has led to the development uh, of these classroom resources for American democracy, investing in democracy now and in the future. And we are also proud to be the lead organizer of the Pennsylvania uh, State uh, Ambassador for Civic Learning Week, PA Civics, uh, which includes PA Youth Vote. Uh, thank you again, Tom and Regina, for being here. Uh, we are a statewide coalition to support, promote, and expand civic education in Pennsylvania. So these are our youth civics activities. We have plenty more. We encourage you to uh, check out our past webinars uh, on our Democracy for Kids K-8 resources, our Can We Talk resources, and everything is free uh, for, for everybody to integrate civics resources. And you can visit uh, our website, uh, and I'll make sure to send that link at the end. So we're going to begin by talking about Studio C70, our student candidate interview series. Uh, you see a testimonial here on the screen from Elaine Sammons, a great teacher at Northeast High School in Philadelphia who has, is a past participant. What a great experience for the students, a million times better than hearing a teacher talk about politics. Uh, that was you know, high praise for the program, and that's what we're going to begin our program today discussing. So Studio C70, this is via Zoom. It is streamed live. Uh, C70 connects candidates with lo uh, local and statewide candidates to classrooms within their electorate area. They are streamed live on our social media pages, uploaded to YouTube. Students come up with the questions. Students ask the questions. The teacher facilitates those lessons. It's a great way to help youth connect with politicians. And interviews usually last around 15 to 20 minutes on the day of. And C70 handles all the, uh, the scheduling and things on the back end to make them happen. So it really is a great way. Uh, to teach about civics. At this point, uh, I believe we'll be joined by Council Member Landau, uh, who I know has been, uh, I'm sure, busy in, in City Council, so we're really appreciative that uh, she's able to make it today. Good afternoon, Council Member. Thank you. Hi, Good to see you on Zoom you? again. Thank you so much for giving me the time. <laughs> Great. And uh, so I want to begin just by asking, why did you sign up? Did you answer that email I sent you in the fall <laughs> to sign up for Studio C70? Uh, um, because um, I, for, for this right now, or are you talking about for the interview? For the interview, I'm sorry, oh, the, yeah. back in, in the fall when you were interviewing. Yeah. Um, because uh, I love talking to young people and it is an opera, it was just another opportunity to um, connect with young people, to hear what's going on with them, to hear what their questions are, and to do my best to answer them. 
Okay, can you tell us just about your experience as a candidate being on with the students in Zoom? Uh, what was it like? How'd it go? It was great. I mean, their questions were fantastic. Zoom is not a, a, a difficult platform for us to navigate. Um, the questions were great. And um, it was, I think everybody got a lot out of it. Um, and it's, I'll be honest, for, for those of us with uh, very packed schedules, it really is uh, an easy way to make sure that you can do even more of this, right? If I um, if I had to go to different locations all of the time to have these conversations, I'd be able to do fewer than if it was to just jump on Zoom. And again, the students were asking uh, really helpful questions. Great, thank you so much uh, for sharing that insight. I'd love to know, what did you gain uh, from the experience as a candidate meeting with young people in this way uh, as part of the candidate process? It's really important for us, you know, older folks <laughs> to know um, what they're thinking about and what their questions are. And it's also really important for those of us who've been doing this for a long time, whether it's as elected officials or folks who are around electeds all the time, to explain to the next generation in more detail what it is that we do. I think we get into our world so much that everything's a given, right? Of course, this is happening, that's happening. You know, The mayor's budget address, wait a second, what does that mean? What are the steps in there? What, what does that really mean as an average Philadelphians? How does it mean that the mayor gave a budget address today, which is her proposed budget, and there's now an interactive process with uh, city council uh, where we get to have hearings and meetings with them and ask each department um, substantive questions. Uh, if you'd like an increase in your budget, what does it mean? What have you been doing? What do you plan to do? All of these things where then the council also gets to give their budget priorities, for example. You can come up with a, a good document in the end that, that benefits all Philadelphians. But if you haven't been a part of this for a long time, you wouldn't, or you never even seen it, you wouldn't know exactly what this means. And that's what I like to break down. You know, what does it mean to run for office? What does it mean each time we're in a hearing? I've been doing at the end of uh, every Thursday, I'm doing a recap with Rue. And I've been telling folks what happened at that council session. I got to tell you, every single week, I hear somebody say, I love the recap with Rue. Even folks who've been doing, um, been in politics for a long time or love city council, they miss something. So they just click on my link and I tell them what happened that day. <clears throat> Excellent. And that that's a really great resource and a really good insight. Thank you. Uh, I was I thought you could uh, provide some insight to any candidates out there watching. Uh, why should candidates participate in Studio C70? Oh, uh, I think <clears throat> for one thing, we have to keep jazzing up the young people to want to be a part of the process and to want to vote. Um, but the second thing is you're giving us a platform uh, of a lot of um, getting uh, getting our message out to a lot of people. <clears throat> I also think um, a lot of times in the campaign cycle, we're talking to um, solely adults and um, or older folks. And we really want to make sure that we're getting the perspective of, of, of all Philadelphians in all categories of Philadelphians and to hear from them their um their perceptions uh both of politics and of course their lived experience of, of what it's like and what they need from us um there's uh it's also challenging right uh every time you go to a different group of people it's extremely uh, challenging to navigate it right it if it's not your community where you're from or where you are every single day it makes you remember how big and diverse and beautiful and wonderful of a city that we have, where we have to, especially for those of us who are at large, meaning represent the entire city, that we have to make sure that we are constantly touching folks in every area of the city and hearing from them as to what they need. Thank you. And you mentioned, you know, the, the challenging aspect of it. So I thought, uh, you know, it, it'd be interesting to hear any advice that you have for a candidate who has signed up this year for the first time, uh, who might be, you know, a little bit nervous about interacting. Uh, children, any advice uh, you have for, for them going into it? You know, I'd say that uh, <clears throat> the young people have uh, the questions, uh, come prepared to talk about uh, why you're running and also um, what your platform is and 
what your your what you want to do to change Philadelphia, the, the issues and the problems that you see. Um, I think that for folks who I try to talk to as many young people as possible. So to me, it's not a surprise how brilliant our young people are. I love it. Um, but if you haven't done it in a while, you might not remember that we've got some extremely smart and talented folks out there, young people who um, want to have some really great questions and want to make a change in the city. But if you, um, you know, it, as a candidate, you go into a lot of uh, public spheres where you're used to being challenged and asked a lot of hard questions. So this shouldn't be too tough, but make sure you're, you're up on um, things that are important to the youth in Philadelphia today. And it, it is a lot of um, what we know is, is is important to all of us, right? Public safety, um, clean and, and neighborhoods, um, just opportunities for them to, to, to grow and to thrive. They want work opportunities. They want, um, you know, places to hang out and play. And, uh, you know, make sure there's plenty of opportunity for sports and things like that. But also really opportunities they might be asking about their careers too. Uh, what is it, you know, we, um, what are, what's available for the STEM community? How is it to get into nursing? All things like that. Um, hopefully at that, you know, you'd be able to point them in certain directions or get back to them afterwards. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And I'm going to now just give everyone one last uh, opportunity uh, to ask questions from the audience. Uh, I'm not seeing any in the Q&A right now. I guess, you know, uh, your answers were very thorough and you you even answered some of the questions I had written down. So yeah. thanks for your time uh, on that. Uh, so I'm still not seeing any questions come in. I thought, you know, to, to end uh, your time on our webinar. And again, thank you so much for doing this. It is Civic Learning Week. Uh, so I thought, you know, if you have any uh, thoughts you'd like to share uh, on your way out about the importance of civic education. Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> First of all, a huge shout out to PA Youth Vote. Um, I love their organizing model of getting kids really involved in this process at a young age, uh, making sure that we that that what they're learning is relevant and that they know that voting um, and all of government is is integral to all of our lives and can really change lives. Right, the things that we were talking about in council now are really about housing and healthcare and, and access to opportunity. And I know that PA Youth Vote does an, a really great job of, of connecting those dots, right? The, the challenges that we all see in Philadelphia today can be fixed by government. Um, and certainly, even if government doesn't have all the tools, uh, good cooperation and collaboration with communities throughout the city is certainly helpful. So. Um, People have to get involved. We have to demystify civics um, for everybody and um, get as many people um, <clears throat> registered to vote and voting as we possibly can. Here in Philadelphia, you know, I'm on the very local level, but looming in the horizon is a presidential election that could change our lives. And um, if it could change our lives in a very negative way, far worse than things that we've seen in the past. So it's very important to get involved. It's very important to get as many people you know registered to vote. Uh, it's very important to get your family and your friends out to vote because the more people that come out to vote in Philadelphia and also in Pittsburgh, we can often turn the entire state. Philadelphia and the suburbs is a huge and strong voting block. And we've got to make sure that we are all getting out there, especially in November for the general election and making sure that we, we take control of our futures by getting out to vote. So thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a great day and enjoy the rest of your civic learning week. Thank you so much, you too. All right, now I'm gonna bring on uh, Nathan Salomon. Nate is a teacher at Universal Alden Reed in Philadelphia. And as you can see here, uh, if the best, the try to get, get a good screenshot of, of him and his class uh, interviewing uh, uh, as part of Studio C70. So Nate, uh, how are you? Hey, happy Thursday, Sam. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, and happy Civic Learning Week to everybody in attendance. Thank you. So Nate, uh, 
I'm going to ask you the same question to begin uh, as I asked Councilmember Landau. Uh, why did you sign up for Studio C70? Uh, I believe uh, you were doing a PA uh, Civics event, and I messaged you about this. So why'd you sign up? I mean, yeah, I remember we met at that event online, like you mentioned, and even before the event was over, I was taking notes like, what is this committee of 70? I'd, I'd never heard of it. And then I was so excited when you emailed me afterwards to like give it a go, because the way you sold it to me and the way it was explained, it sounded awesome. Um, and I really love putting people who were involved in the political process in front of my students, because it's one thing if I talk theory and I give examples, it's way more powerful when someone who actually does it and has lived it and has campaigned is in front of them. So your students interviewed uh, a candidate for city commissioner and a municipal judge. So I'd love to hear, how did you prepare your students uh, for the teachers out there just so they can see your process? How did you prepare your students for these interviews? And also, uh, did you do anything differently because you had different uh, positions that they were interviewing? Yeah, so we, it was perfect timing for that class in particular. That was my advanced placement U.S. government class, and I do project-based learning with them. So literally, they were about a week out from our mock election in our high school. And so we had talked about interest groups, about um, lobbyists, about uh, you know, running for office, and all the students had different roles. They Some of them were candidates. Some of them were involved in the political campaigns and like were running the parties. So literally, the timing was absolutely perfect. Um, and that was a big help and a big hand up there. Uh, also, I want to really quickly uh, shout out the Constitution Center in Philadelphia, National Constitution Center. They do a lot of scholar exchanges where you can have judges or different individuals who interpret the law come into the classroom. And so those students had had those experience before, and they were definitely used to, you know, going out and talking and discussing about these ideas. Um, but what set Committee of 70 apart was that they were just able to ask so many questions and they were able to directly interact in what we really loved about that experience. Um, the, uh, yeah, so those are probably the two things, the project-based learning um, as well as the scholar exchanges. Excellent. And also, I should say, uh, the National Constitution Center is a PA Civics member. Uh, so we have PA Civics is represented by C70, uh, PA Youth Vote, and the National Constitution Center uh, here. And it's really great to, to get all of our partners involved here on this webinar. So uh, next, uh, Nate, I was wondering, uh, it, I know it was it was in the fall, but is there a particular moment from the interview, maybe af or afterwards, uh, debriefing with your students that really stands out to you? I think the in the moment and then now, like months later, in the moment, the energy was you could feel it. You could feel their excitement. You could feel how energized they were to like have this opportunity. They were like, we just talked with a politician. We And shout out, by the way, really fast to Lisa Dealey and Barbara Thompson. They were fantastic. They answered every question the kids could dream of. They were so happy that they had that opportunity. And in the moment, they just felt energized. And especially with the project we were working on, we had done it for about a month. And, you know, the longer a project goes on, the more tired people become. But I felt like that really sparked all the students back and to just really nail it. And they did a great job on the project, as they always do. They're, they're a great class. Um, and in the, the long term, this is actually a relevant example right now, TikTok and the ban that's been happening or the what happened to the House recently. Um, I think this week it happened. My students have said they've been calling their Congress people. And I wonder, and I've had talks with them about like, this is awesome. Like not all years students do that. And they're like, we've talked to politicians. We know how to do it. And I think that's a direct connection to Committee of 70 and to like taking that from the local to then the national level and actually state in between a few people called uh, the representative at the state level too. So in the moment, it was just that extra spark, that extra push. And even now, later on, they still have that in them. Like, oh, we can do this. Like they're great to talk to and we will be heard. So, yeah. And that's that's a great representation of the importance of uh, weaving in civic skills and knowledge together, building knowledge that builds to skills uh, that ultimately it leads to to civic dispositions and action. Uh, so uh, I wanted to to close uh, talking in the teacher perspective of students who seventy. Uh, if uh, wondering why should teachers out there watching synchronously, asynchronously, why should teachers participate in Studio C seventy? I mean, I could, that would be the rest of the, the webinar right now, but what I'll, I'll do, and I'll say my quick points is, first of all, you guys made it so easy. Like it was, hey, you should come. Here's a link. You, you specifically, Sam, you worked so hard to make the connection happen. So thank you for doing all that. And it was very seamless for me. It was like, when can we set it up? And it was very plug and play from there. Um, and I mean, for teachers, 
it's a springboard of endless possibilities, right? You have the opportunity beforehand to go over candidates and go over campaigns. And it's so much more powerful to have stakeholders in the room, whether it's for an assessment or just a regular like day in class to be like, hey, you've been studying and practicing all these concepts and ideas and philosophies. Now put them to practice. You're going to have a real politician. You're going to have a real candidate in front of you ask them these concepts that we've been learning and knock it out of the park. Um, and I, for me alone, that was great. The final thing I'll say is it humanizes everybody. You know, you see politicians, you see people on like posters, you see them in TV ads on YouTube, all the YouTube, uh, and you see them everywhere, but then you don't really get to just talk with them and having that opportunity to just hear their ideas and to see them communicate. It, it really does inspire hope. It really does kind of bring that joy to the classroom of, of civics and teaching in general. Well, thank you so much, Nate. Uh, and thank you for hanging around. We'll do a little teacher-specific Q&A a little bit later. A reminder, attendees, uh, you can ask questions in the chat at any time, uh, and we will ask them at the end. So thank you, Nate, uh, for hanging around and for sharing. Uh, and we are going to transition now uh, and welcome on Tom Quinn from PA Youth Vote. And uh, we do have a special bonus guest, Regina Holler from PA Youth Vote, uh, in, out in Western PA, is, is joining us as well. Uh, so thank you, uh, Regina, and thank you, Tom, for joining. Uh, happy Civic Learning Week. And I thought uh, we could begin with you uh, introducing yourselves and PA Youth Vote, and then we'll get, dive into the resources. Hi, Sam. Thanks so much uh, for having us on. Um, yeah, so uh, PA Youth Vote is a nonpartisan uh, group that works um, initially with teachers, but also with students. We work with legislators. We work with city, uh, with um, school boards uh, at all different levels to try to um, help young people get, um, you know, be engaged in the political uh, system. Um, and so I am uh, a co-founder. Um, I'm also a teacher at Central High School in Philadelphia. Um, and I'm the uh, the uh, education and policy director for PA Youth Vote. Um, and I want to uh, give Dr. Holly um, a chance to introduce herself. Thank you and good evening. Um, Yes, I'm the Western, my name is Dr. Regina B. Holly, and I'm the Western Director, Western PA Director for PA Youth Food. Um, I'm excited. This is my first time uh, participating in this uh, arena of helping students actually um, get out the vote, register the vote, and making helping to make that into a lifelong activity for them. Um, I am a former teacher with the Pittsburgh Public Schools, a former principal, and also a former elected official. I am a, I was a board member for Pittsburgh Public Schools for eight years. So I'm excited to be here, excited about the work that we're doing um, in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, we're trying to catch up to some of the work that's been done in Philadelphia. Uh, we are doing some of that in our schools, and we are now starting to expand it within all of Allegheny County. So um, we're learning from Philadelphia, uh, learning what they've done, um, and trying to institute some of those good practices uh, within um, our school district as well. Wonderful. And uh, I do believe uh, <laughs> just checking the, the registrations for some of these programs for the, the primary coming up in April. Uh, we do have, uh, we should be having uh, Studio C70 mock election, those things uh, will be statewide. And a reminder to everyone, these are statewide resources. Uh, and I'm going to, let's dive in uh, to the resources now. Uh, Tom uh, uh, developed these resources. So uh, I'm going to kind of run through the slides and, and invite Tom to share uh, a bit about uh, the elections and voting curriculum uh, now. Uh, and then I'll run through uh, kind of the, the parts pretty quickly. So, uh, Tom, can you just tell us a bit about the elections and voting curriculum uh, from 70 and PA Youth Vote that you put together? Yeah, sure. So this started off as a curriculum in the School District of Philadelphia um, that uh, we then shared with um, Committee of 70, and they polished them up, uh, made them uh, uh, applicable statewide. Um, and so they're now available, uh, you know, in the on the 70s, uh, C70s website. Um, do you want to go to the next slide? And I'll kind of go through the different parts of it. Mm -hmm. The idea behind it was to um, sort of give students some history 
uh, practical skills and then kind of the ability to find out, you know, who's on the ballot and actually, you know, how do you actually go through the steps of voting? Because that's usually one of the main things that stops um, or, you know, one of the main reasons why young people don't vote is they just don't know the steps. They don't know the process. You Sam, feel, feel free to add anything, too, if I'm missing anything here. No, they do a great job. I did drop the link in the chat to all of our youth civics resources in there, and, and the their curriculum, I believe, is second uh, on the list. Uh, Tom, do you want me to run through the, the topics real fast? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Excellent. So uh, it begins with voting rights history. Uh, it's really, really well done. Uh, I've used this in, in when I was uh, teaching uh, last year. I used this lesson with my students uh you know around the rights around voting was electoral college uh the right of voting uh and, and laws of disfranchisement uh that goes to lessons and and the topics have different lessons so it's not a one-to-one -one with lessons topics uh political parties and voter registration uh, the next ones are really it and what i love about these resources uh about this curriculum is that it really starts with the important knowledge that builds uh to the skills at the end which really uh, matches what we know about the cognitive science of learning. Media literacy is next, using the uh, vote by mail uh, debate to teach um, media literacy uh, and, and looking into you know the, the false allegations of fraud and, and building that in students. Uh, and then we build to the skills, making a plan to vote. Uh, and finally, uh, using the C70 voter guide, the excellent voter guide that C70 has, uh, and making a ballot for students. And this is kind of leads in uh, to uh, the mock election. So before we talk too much about the mock election, I'll go back. Uh, Tom, anything else I'll just generally like to share about the the curriculum? Yeah, I mean, I think that the uh, the 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 best part of it. I mean, we do this in the fall before the general election, but then we do the candidate uh, research again in the primary, and they already know how to do it. So it's really you know it's just excellent. Um, they they really engage in it and it really does help a lot that's an excellent point about you know you, you got to remember right pennsylvania twice a year every year uh and using the school the flow of the school year to really uh build that uh in students that's a very good point uh all right uh moving on to the mock election uh we're taking signups right now our, our deadline for signups is april 8th this year uh so uh tom you and i work together uh on the mock election uh you like to uh, tell everyone about the youth mock election? Yeah, so I mean, uh, you've many people have done uh, mock elections, but I think uh, what's neat about this is that it's actually statewide. So um, the ultimate goal is to get uh, students from all different counties, different you know, urban and rural, um, liberal areas, conservative areas, um, to really kind of um, get them to engage in the mock election. Um, you know, cast their ballots and then be able to say this is what young people across the state uh, are are thinking in terms of who they're going to vote for. Um, we intentionally make it shortly before the real election so that we can actually publish the results and say this is what the young people are thinking. Um, and it's again, it's once they've done the research uh, and they go through the process, they can do it electronic. We can still do it electronically, right? Um, I believe. Yes, or on an option. There's a paper ballot, uh, which I think mm -hmm. is on the slide, isn't it? Um, that so students can um, can sort of engage in an authentic process, uh, and that's I think makes a huge difference with civics. I would agree, and uh, really excited. We have uh, double digit counties uh, have are represented in the schools that have signed up so far this year. So this is growing. We're looking at, at scaling it. It really is a great opportunity. And Tom mentioned the fact that it's statewide. Uh, I remember before I started at 70 reading, there was a press release about the youth mock election results uh, in Philadelphia. And that was just such a cool way to truly think about what young people are, are thinking about the electoral process. Uh, and uh, I know I'm participated in, in showing my students uh, who were so passionate about uh, that election in the primary uh, that they could see the percentages and, and that professional treatment of the results was really, uh, really something. So uh, that is a good point about the mock election. So before I ask Tom uh, some questions and then open it up uh, to your Q&A, uh, just a reminder to everyone, uh, C70 is here to facilitate this. Uh, large scale uh, gatherings, train the trainer, virtual events, Act 48, we are we are able to give Act 48 hours 
Uh, we can give overviews of why voting is important. Everything is there on the website. And Tom, my first question to you is uh, just a reminder, uh, how much does it cost to use these excellent civic resources? Oh, it's uh, pretty much free. Uh, maybe it takes a little bit of time um, to uh, to plan, but we do try to make it so that it's easy for teachers um, because teachers have a lot on their plate. And no, there's actually no charge. Everything is available uh, on either C70, usually on C70 and PA Youth Host website. Um, and if you can't find it, just email me and I'll make sure you have it. Excellent. And, and Tom, one thing uh, you, you started to mention, I'd love to hear uh, just for teachers who are watching, uh, how do you use these materials in your own classroom? You kind of talked about your development process and your why, but how do you use them? Yeah, so for example, the um, the first uh, topic in the elections and voting, uh, we do the historical timeline of voting rights and voter suppression, um, looking at different how different constituencies uh, were given the franchise over throughout U.S. history um, and different ways that they were denied the franchise as well. Um, and then we look at current uh, legislation in Pennsylvania. There's around 60 bills in the state legislature right now um, that you can see on Voting Rights Lab, uh, which is an excellent resource. Um, you can see which ones are helping to advance access to the ballot and others that restrict access to the ballot for various different people. Uh, some of those things are specifically um, <clears throat> you know, have a disproportionate impact on young people. Um, so getting them to see that these are still issues that are relevant, it's not just history, um, that, you know, these are the issues that are around uh, voting that is that are still important. Excellent, and this question, Tom or, or Regina, either of you can, can answer this. Uh, what uh, suggestions do you have uh, for teachers who are interested in using these uh, materials? How, you know, suggested use, why it's important, things like that. Yeah, Regina, do you have anything you want to jump yes. in? Yes, well, the uh, we have toolkits for um, every school within Allegheny County. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> and we're more than willing to um, send those out to you. Uh, you can just email me and I'll get them together for you. Uh, you can also get them through Philadelphia. He has them all ready for you for Philadelphia. We have um, QR codes for students to actually uh, vote um, using their our QR code, their QR codes specifically designated Register. for their schools. Register to vote. They can't vote with the Register. QR code. I'm sorry, registering <laughs> to vote. Um, I'm getting, I'm so far ahead. I, I'm ready to vote now. Uh, uh, registering students to vote. Um, also, some he has wonderful educational tools for teachers to use um, to teach lessons within the school. Uh, we have videos that you can actually look at um, to do presentations within your schools. And we're also willing to come out and do presentations in Allegheny County. Tom's not going out to do our presentations because he has to teach school. Uh, but we do have people in Philadelphia that are um, able to do that for us as well. I'll just add that um, one of the things we try to do is make the resources timely for each election. So we update them with the candidates and the ballot and the offices that are on the ballot, um, which, again, it, you know, even for adults, sometimes it's hard to find out, find some of that information. So helping students find, you know, you know, through that process and and making it easy with presentations for the classroom and things like that. So, um, yeah, check out the materials. And I think Regina just uh, gave a great uh, transition to uh, how I wanted to to end the uh, formal uh, aspect of the program before we open it up again to uh, bring Nate back on it. And Q&A, Tom, uh, I just changed the slide here to show uh, uh, some other educator and uh, community resources that PA Youth Vote offers. I wanted to cede the floor to you uh, to share anything else that you've got going on uh, as, as part of you know the spirit of Civic Learning Week uh, and all the great work that you do. Well, um, in, Pits in Pittsburgh, we will be having what we call a huddle, um, and we will be bringing students from all from some of our school districts through school districts and schools within the Pittsburgh Public Schools to gather on tomorrow. And we will be uh, actually training 
some of those students to go back to their schools and do some of this rich work around getting their, their peers to actually understand, first of all, why it's important to vote and then getting them registered to vote. Uh, so that's one thing that we're doing. And uh, we have a lot of good partners that will be working with us. The Alliance for uh, Police uh, Accountability, League of Women Voters, Civic Center, of course, um, Committee of 70, um, the Carnegie Library in Pittsburgh, PA Youth Advocacy, um, the National Council of Jewish Women of Pittsburgh, um, the New Pennsylvania Project, and of course, PA Youth Vote. So we have a, a plethora of organizations that will be coming together to help service our, our young people uh, and help them to be leaders in this area of voting um, throughout Allegheny County. Excellent, Tom, do you have anything uh, else you'd like to share before I uh, open up to questions? We just got our first question that came in, so. Oh, great. Um, just so you know, we we um, are mainly based in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, um, but our resources are available to any county, any school. Um, we work mostly with public schools, uh, um, schools with Black and Latinx populations, but the materials are available to any school and any student and any teacher. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to ask Nate to come back on. And, uh, you know, and, and Regina, thank you for being here again uh, at the last second. So I'm sorry your name's not on the slide. Uh, we just had an uh, anonymous uh, question uh, here from uh, uh, our attendees. So thank you. Uh, the question is, how do you ensure nonpartisanship and lack of ideological bias in your work uh, using these resources and in general? Uh, they add language and labeling can matter. And one might label a bill of voter suppression, whereas another may label it an election integrity matter. That's a good question. Um, so uh, it is, um, I think, a good conversation to have with the students. Um, yeah. A lot of things like voter uh, registration, um, you know, in some ways were intended as election integrity. Um, in some ways were intended to suppress certain constituents from being able to vote uh, historically. Um, so, I mean, those conversations have always been around, and I think it's important to have those conversations with students. I can't talk to the resources because I didn't make them, but I know for myself in my classroom, it can be kind of a two-way approach. I know for myself, I like to just show them, hey, these are one idea, these are the other ideas, and I try to keep it fair and balanced and have representation from all parties. And then we have a conversation about it. And one of the activities I like to do with my students is a blog where there's a great website called All Sides. And they have like stories that they show a story and they show um, maybe a left-leaning view, a right-leaning view, and a center-leaning view. And I have my students read the left and the right-leaning view and kind of do a whole analysis piece about it so they get that full picture. And so you can have a conversation. It is not my job, and I don't think it's any particular teacher's job to force students to think one way, but to give them all the picture and to let them kind of figure out and make their own decisions for themselves. And I'm really trying to be cognizant about that whenever I make resources, whenever I teach anything, I try to really bring the full picture to the table. Excellent. And I just have, you know, from the development of the resources and the dissemination and the, um, you know, this question seems a little bit more geared towards the elections and voting curriculum, but with all of this, right, uh, it's just about uh, the the focusing on on the civic, the, the knowledge of how these things, our systems work, where they come from, the development of them, uh, and uh, the perspectives on, on issues and uh, open dialogue. I would definitely uh, encourage uh, uh, to ask the question to check out our Monday uh, webinar, uh, which I believe is on YouTube now. Uh, about Can We Talk, which is uh, Committee of 70's excellent, excellent program uh, that builds civic dialogue skills uh, for uh, students who are piloting in high schools now and again, all free, uh, really fascinating work uh, that Chris Atulo uh, and, and uh, crew are doing over there. So that is a great uh, place uh, to be. Uh, I don't see any other questions in there. And again, you can ask them uh, right there. Thank you to that person for using uh, the Q&A function. That was really helpful. Uh, I thought uh, as, as we reach the end here, I'd love to hear any uh, advice 
uh, that you, uh, our, our expert teachers here have uh, for how to incorporate experiential civics, uh, doing the civics, um, bringing those skills in uh, for teachers, whether it's these resources or other, uh, just some advice on the main topic of this webinar, which is specifically experiential civics. Yeah, I would just say, um, you know, don't be afraid to put students in the driver's seat. Um, I think one of the things that I hear constantly from adults is, well, what do we do about youth apathy? And I think that's just a myth. Um, I think that youth are extremely passionate. Um, there's tons of issues that impact them, and they know about those issues. Um, they don't always know exactly how to address those issues, particularly politically or governmentally. Um, and that's where we come in as adults. You know, it's we're the ones that need to be not apathetic, right? We need to actually engage uh, those young people. These candidates need to show up to the, uh, the, the, the schools and, and talk to the students in the classrooms, um, which is what's so great about the candidate interviews. Um, when they do that, when we do that um, as adults, uh, I think students really begin to understand and make the connections and um, build that political efficacy that they need to really make a difference. Um, and that's what's really powerful. And we look at it in terms of, um, this is a, a life skill. We want you to understand, we want the children to understand that just like you're learning um, financial literacy now in schools, um, we also want you to learn that this is part of what you, ha you have a right to. Uh, every year you have a right to vote um, as long as you're meeting the criteria of age. Uh, we want you to know that this is part of what you can do to enrich your own life and help your life experiences be the best it can be. Yeah, everything that both Tom and Regina said is right on the mark. I think Lisa Dealey during the Committee of 70 placed it one way I never thought about before, where she said, imagine you go out for food and you're sitting down and at a table and you just point to a random table and say, I want to have what they're having to eat. And you don't even look, you don't know what it is. That's kind of like not taking the chance to like think about your vote and consider it. And you're just dropping off the menu and choosing at random. Maybe it's an awesome meal. Maybe it's not something you like to eat. And I just think giving students that power and that ability to your vote matters and what you do matters and making the curriculum relevant to, you know, what you're doing in Philly, what you're going to be doing for the life that you vote and you get engaged with, I think is awesome. I also think too, teachers sometimes can be on an island where we're on kind of our own area and maybe we don't think to connect or we're so kind of caught up in our own lesson, our own school. Um, and something I love about working at Auden Read is they give me that chance to reach out and to connect and talk with different people about trying to make really interactive lessons. Um, and it, you could say I could take a, a campaign to a cam pleasure because it makes it a lot more enjoyable and fun. That's that's my dad joke for the day. <laughs> well, what a way what a way to end it. Uh, thank you, Nate, so much. So just a couple uh, reminders to everyone: uh, questions or comments, you can reach out. Uh, to Justin Villery, the C70 Director of Civic Education, uh, or myself uh, here, uh, our emails are up there, uh, and you know, PA Youth Vote uh, and, uh, is always available. Uh, you can reach out uh, to Tom there as well. And thank you so much, uh, everyone uh, watching uh, this synchronously here on uh, Thursday in Civic Learning Week. Everyone who will watch, who's wa watch this uh, asynchronously, we hope this was really helpful. Uh, these are really, really great and free resources. Uh, and what better way uh, to celebrate Civic Learning Week than, than coming together uh, and hearing from uh, teachers and candidates who have participated in these programs, how to use them uh, and why uh, they're so important to use. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all of our guests today uh, and, thank, and throughout uh, Civic Learning Week, everyone who joined us uh, for all of these programs and have a great rest of your evening.